Hi everyone and welcome back to Coding with Flutter. This video is a continuation of my small series on how to build a login flow with Firebase. Email and password signing and authentication in general is a very common requirement in a lot of apps and my videos showing how to implement this have been very popular. However, since creating these videos I've discovered a much better way of handling authentication with Firebase. So in this video we are going to revisit the previous flow and we'll see how we can improve it by using Streams and Stream Builder. As a starting point for this video, I'll use the sample code from this project on GitHub. By the way, I have updated this to work with Flutter 1.2, which is the latest stable release of Flutter as of February 2019. And this code also works with the latest Android SDK. So before we continue, I encourage you to get the latest code by going to the releases page over here and download the source code for this release so that you can start from the same source code as mine. And after you have done this, you need to make sure that you have configured Firebase correctly. As part of this, you should have configured your own Firebase project to enable email and password authentication and you should have downloaded the Firebase configuration files from the project settings in your Firebase console. If you haven't done these steps, you can go back to video two of this series where I explain how to do this. Okay, so I can now head over to Android Studio and before we make any changes, let me give you a preview of what we will be doing. This diagram shows the current widget hierarchy for the login application that we have built. So on top of everything, we have a root widget, which is called my app. And this has an authentication provider as a child. This is an inherited widget and its purpose is to provide access to an old object that we can use to access the Firebase authentication APIs. Then we have a material app. And after that, there is a root page, which is a stateful widget that we use to decide whether to show the login or the home page. And the reason why this page is stateful is that it holds some information about the current authentication status. And the way the authentication status changes is by receiving some callbacks from either the login page or the home page when the user signs in or signs out. And if we head back to Android Studio, we can open the root page and we can see that this is a stateful widget and that there are a number of calls to set state. So what we're going to do next is to replace all the logic for handling the authentication status by exposing a new stream in the old class and by consuming that stream with a stream builder inside the root page. And just to be clear, this video assumes that you're already familiar with streams and the stream builder widget. So we're going to make some changes and after we are done, our root page will become a stateless widget and our authentication callbacks will be removed. Okay, so let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to do is to open the alt.dart file. And in here, I'm going to type in some code and then I'm going to explain it. So here I'm going to type stream of string and then get and then on alt state changed. And this is a getter variable that will return firebase alt dot on alt state changed dot map and then within the map I can take a user and convert it into user question mark dot uid like this okay so how does this work here I create a new variable called on alt state changed and this is a computed variable, which means that we can only get its value, but not set it. This variable is a stream that will only ever emit values of type string. This is in line with all the other methods in this class, which are all features that return the Firebase user unique identifier or null if the user is, lo is not logged in. Next, we have the body of this computed variable. So here we call Firebase alt dot on alt state changed. And if we open up the documentation for this, we find that on alt state changed is a stream that receives a Firebase user each time the user signs in or signs out. So back to our code, we have this stream. And 
What we want to do is to map all the values emitted by this stream into a Firebase user ID. So for that purpose, we use the map operator. And this takes one argument, which is of type Firebase user in this case. And in fact, let me add this for clarity here. And then it returns a user.uid. So there is one caveat here, and that is that if the user has signed out, then the stream would emit a null value. And if we were to call user.uid on a null value, we would get an exception. So to prevent that, we use a question mark here, which is a shorthand syntax that we can use to return the user ID only if the user is not null. Okay, so now that we have added this stream, we want to expose it in the base alt abstract class so that we can use it in our code. So to do that, I'm just going to copy this variable declaration and then I'm going to paste it over here. And I can also add an at override annotation to specify that this declaration overrides the one in the abstract class. Okay, so now that we have added this new stream, it's time to see it in action. So we can head back to our root page. And the first thing that we are going to do is to modify our build method. So I'm going to delete all this code. And in here, I'm going to type in final base alt alt equals alt provider of and then context dot alt and this gives me access to the old object. And in here, I'm going to use a stream builder. So I can type return stream builder. And for the type annotation, I'm going to specify string, which is the type of our user ID. And then this stream builder takes two parameters. The first one is a stream. And for the stream, I can pass old dot on old state changed. And the second parameter is a builder. Now this takes two parameters. The first one is a build context context. And the second one is an async snapshot of string snapshot. There we go. Now the snapshot is a very useful object that contains some information about the stream. And we can use it to check if the stream is ready and has started emitting values as well as to get the latest event on the stream or even to detect if there have been any errors on the stream. So let's see how we can use it here. I can type in if snapshot.connectionState is equal to connectionState.active. And if that is the case, we can check the latest value on the stream. So here I can type in the following final Goal is logged in equals snapshot dot has data and then return is logged in question mark home page colon login page like this. So let me explain this. So if we look up the documentation for snapshot dot has data we can find that this returns whether this snapshot contains a non-null data value. And this is exactly what we want to use to determine if the user is logged in or not. Because our stream will return null if the user is not logged in, or it will return a string representing the user ID if the user is logged in. So on the next line, we can return the home page or the login page, depending on whether the user is logged in. Next, we also need to handle the case where the connection state is not active. And this happens when the app is just started and Firebase hasn't yet determined if the user is signed in or not. So in this case, we can just return the waiting screen that we have defined over here. So here I can type return build waiting screen like this. Now, believe it or not, this is all the code that we need in the root page to decide what page to show. And this means that we can remove all the remaining methods because the root page no longer needs to hold any state. And we can also delete this alt status enumeration as well. 
And finally, we can update the root page to be a stateless widget like this. And I can just delete this code and the job is done. And I can't overstate how well Stream Builder works in this case because we have managed to reduce the size of our root page from about 70 lines to just over 30 and the resulting code is a lot simpler. So the key takeaway here is that Streams and Stream Builder are very powerful and you can use them to turn complex stateful widgets into simple stateless widgets. Now, before we test our new implementation, we also need to remove the callbacks from our login page and home page. So I can start from the home page and over here I can remove this callback and the constructor as well. And I can remove this call that was there before. And similarly, if I head over to the login page, I can locate this callback and delete it. And I can also scroll down to the code that was calling the on signing callback and I can remove this as well. Finally, we can see that the compiler now shows some errors in the login page test. So this is because the test did rely on the fact that the login page had a callback. So to address this, we're going to do a quick fix and that is to remove all the code that checks if the callback has been called. So here I'm going to delete this line, delete the callback and delete the expectation in the end. And this means that these tests only had to check if the signing with email and password methods have been called. So I can apply the same change to the remaining tests, just like this. And to this test as well. So I'm going to remove the callback and remove the expectation. And if I want, I can quickly run the tests again. So after this is completed, I can see that all the tests are now green. So here we go. And finally, I'm ready to test the entire application. So to do that, I can select the main target again. I can do a hot restart and then I can also open up the console uh, over here. And now I can try to sign in with an invalid email and password, for example, test at test dot test and one one one. And I can see that the Firebase console tells me that the user is not found. I could try to create a new account and here I could say test 10 at test dot com and test one two three four. And when I do this, I can create a new account and I can see that Firebase is telling me that I have now a registered user. So the signing flow now works. I can also try to log out and this takes me back to the signing screen. So this is great and it shows that our login demo now works with the stream builder. And just to be completely clear, the reason that this works is that Every time we make, we make a call to sign in or sign out with Firebase, a new event is added to the on auth state changed string. And this is great because it means that it doesn't matter where in our code we decide to sign in or sign out. As long as our root page registers to the on auth state changed stream by a stream builder, then we are all good. Okay, so we have come to the end of this video. In summary, the most important thing that you need to know is that Firebase auth exposes an on auth state changed stream and that you can use this with Stream Builder to decide whether to show a login page or a home page in your apps. And this approach is great because it doesn't require any explicit state management. The last thing that I want to say is that there is a lot more about streams than I have covered in this video. So if you want an in-depth explanation about streams and more advanced concepts, you can register on my website at codingwithflutter.com and you will receive an email when my Flutter course will be available. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.